Hey guys, I'm back. So, in this episode we're going to talk about side-scrolling. Uh, we're going to start having some fun, because when you make a game, you can do whatever the heck you want, and you can make the rules, and you can make the land do whatever you know you want it to do. Um, as you can see, I made a couple changes actually since the last time we ran it. Mainly I started adding some random variation to the block positions and moving them around to make things more challenging. And um, But we can't scroll, so that's kind of annoying because I have a lot more than just five blocks, but I can't see them. So we're going to add side scrolling. And the way to accomplish that is to create a scroll offset variable, which we're going to add to our game state struct. And that's just going to be a float that we add as a number to everything in the x position. And I'm going to call this scroll x. And we're going to start it as 0. So let me go ahead and initialize that real quick. So we have our scroll x. And scroll x is going to be added to everything we draw. Now I don't know if SDL supports rendering transforms, which would make this easier on me. I don't think it does, so we're going to go ahead and just manually add this to every X position. So game scroll X gets added to all of our ledges, definitely to our man, and to our stars, which I've actually turned back on. You haven't been able to see on the screen just yet. And I think that's everything that we're drawing. We're only drawing three layers of stuff. So now that I've done that, I need to actually move the scrolling position based off of the position of ran. So inside process, which gets a function that gets called after the man moves, I'm going to go ahead and set the scroll x equal to, and the way you can think about this is it's neg when it's negative, the screen actually will scroll forward. Uh, it's kind of an optical illusion. So um, I'm going to set that equal to the man's position and just see how that works. All right, that's okay if we not we're like want to not see behind us at all. So um, I'm going to use the man pointer directly. So what I'm going to do is then I'm going to offset that by half of the screen. We're in 640 by 480, so half of the screen is 320. Man, this thing is testing my patience already. Work. All right. So this will probably get us about halfway. Yep. Awesome. Now, I don't want us to be able to see off the left side of the beginning of the screen, so I'm going to add one more little special if statement here. If scroll x is greater than 0, it's 0. And that'll stop us from scrolling off the left edge of our game level. At least I think it will. Awesome. So now we can actually get started here. So this is already getting to be pretty awesome. So this is what our level is going to look like. And I actually have 100 stars randomly distributed throughout this level all over the place. Um, nothing happens when we hit them, but we're about to change that. So... I'm going to go ahead and make it so that you get game over and you lose a life or you lose a life if you get hit by a star. And the way we're going to do that, I almost canceled my screen recording. Oh god. Um, the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the collide function. So inside collision detect, we check to see if we collide with any of the ledges. I'm going to add a special check in here to see if we actually collide with any of the stars. And um I'm going to also go off on a tangent and define the number of stars we have using a constant. I don't want to be typing 100 for these because I might change this in a second. So real quick, everywhere I see the word 100 that's not related to the ledges, change that to num stars. There we go. And there's one more place I have to change that. That's where I actually declare them up here. Okay. Make things a little easier. Alright, so I have a function called collide which will return true if we collide with anything via bounding box collision. It's a function I've actually been passing around for quite a while because it's annoying to rewrite it a lot. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is say if collide 2D and then I'm going to check to see if the man
which happens to be, did I screw something up? X1, Y1, okay. Collides with the star that we're checking against. The guy is 48 by 48, and the stars are 64 by 64. If this happens, we're going to go ahead and do a couple things. First off, we have man, and we need to add a state for him to be dead. And that state is going to be called is dead. And if man is dead, he'll be dead. And of course, I have to initialize it up here. This is not dead by default. Wouldn't be a very useful game if you just started dead. Suppose I can make that happen, you know, I'm, I'm making the rules here, but that wouldn't be that fun. Um, so inside collision detect, I set his dead to one. Now that will change quite a few things. Um, first thing is nothing will move once he dies. It's kind of the way Mario pauses when you get hit, everything stops. The way we're going to make that happen is the same way process doesn't do anything if the game state is not in status game. We're also going to make it so nothing happens in here if he's dead. And that includes anything that we move in the game. So that takes care of all of the game movement logic. Though there are some other things we might want to run in status game even if he's dead, so I'm going to put this most of this code in a second if statement block here. But things like gravity and stuff are going to end when he gets hit. So once he gets hit, he is dead, and everything will stop. And there's a way that we need to be able to tell that he's dead, and the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to draw fire, which I've added uh, over top of him and cause him to burn when he gets hit by a star. And the way I'm going to do that is quite simply where I draw the guy, I can find him, if game man is dead. See how much time I've taken up here. Got plenty of time left. If he's dead, <laughs> um, then I draw flames on top of him. And the way I'm going to do that is I got his X position. And the flames are a different size than him, and I want to center the flames around him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take his X position minus his width over 2, which will give me his center. And then I'm going to draw the flames at that center minus the flame width over 2. The flames are 38 by 83. So what I'll do is I'll subtract from this 38 over 2. And then the same thing, uh, gain man minus 24 minus again 83 over 2. That should draw the flame right on top of him. And then, of course, the thing that I'm drawing is game fire, the texture I created for that. And then I'm going to randomly flip it back and forth. And the way I'm going to do that is um, if the game time... modulo 20, oh, I'm going to screw this up, is less than 10. I think that'll work. All right, so that should draw some fire on top of him. And we're actually only going to have him burn for a short amount of time before we show game over. And let me see if what I've written so far works at least. So i got to find a start. Oh, apparently I did start him out is dead, which is angering. So I could have sworn I didn't. I'm going to go ahead and put a printf call in here and see if this is happening incorrectly, which will annoy me like none other. All right, so something's wrong. Oh. It should be not in front of this. If he's not dead, the game movement works. It's my mistake. All right, so I'm going to hit, get hit by a star, and the game stopped. The fire's in the wrong place, though. This is already starting to make me laugh. 
So, uh, what did I do? Man x minus 24 minus 38 over 2. I'm just going to manually dial this in because I'm not in the mood to do math in my head right now. Let's find a star if I can. That was too far even more. Maybe I need to add it instead of subtract it. Probably do. Oh wow, it's really easy to get hit by these stars apparently, uh, which is going to make whoever's playing really mad. But uh, I think it's funny, so I'm going to leave it that way. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll make the bounding box for the stars a little. I don't want to make the game cheap, you know? All right, so that's when he dies. He catches on fire. Um, in my is dead check, I'm going to make the bounding box of the stars a little less than 64, because that's kind of menacing. I'm going to make them 32, so that way there's a little bit of a give, so you don't get hit so easily. And I'm going to go ahead and find one if I can. And I got to add more stars. Yep, that's perfect. So now, um, if I have enough time, I'm going to switch to the game over screen, which I've actually added to the game. So a couple things need to happen. First off is I need to have a countdown. I'm just going to rush here and get this done. Same way I have time, I'm going to have death countdown. And of course, I'm going to have to initialize this at something. Well, maybe I don't. I'll only use it if uh, is dead is true. So. In, inside process, if we're in the game state, but he's not dead. If game man is dead, I do need to initialize that variable. Game death countdown negative one will signify we're not using it. Go back to process. If he's dead. And we're not using t the countdown. And then we are going to set the countdown to uh, 120 frames. If the countdown is running, we will count down. And if we were counting down and we hit zero, Then we will init the game over screen, set the game state, if I can find it. And that will cause us to draw the game over screen. If I can find it. Oh, I screwed up. I screwed up bad. We don't run, do game over unless he's out of lives. And I'm almost out of time. So instead I'm going to init, this doesn't get ran yet. Init status lives. Game. I'm going to set the status state. All right. Going to run it. Watch him die. And then uh, get the uh, live screen showing that he lost a life. It's working perfectly. So when he dies, he loses a life. And then the game starts over. So that's what I'm only going to show you for this uh, episode, guys. Stay tuned next time where I add in some uh, other cool stuff for this game.